So, the other night, I decided to sit down and watch Damsel, the latest big-budget Netflix original movie starring Millie Bobby Brown. I was a little curious about this one because Damsel is a movie that Netflix put a lot of effort and resources into promoting. They marketed the shit out of this thing. They really wanted you to know this movie was coming out. But despite their best efforts, there was virtually no buzz around this movie. And that is for a very specific reason. People now know not to give a shit about Netflix original movies. It's completely pointless. There is a very specific standard that has been set by Netflix when it comes to its movies being really bad or just painfully mediocre. And Millie Bobby Brown is not even a stranger to this because before Damsel, she was already the lead of Enola Holmes, a movie I didn't hate but found so incredibly forgettable, especially given the fact that nobody talked about it when it came out despite apparently doing really well. There was a sequel to this movie announced and I was curious to check it out to see if it was going to improve on the mostly whatever first movie. And up until I started working on this video you're currently watching, I was still waiting for the sequel to come out. So imagine my surprise when I realized a few days ago that Enola Holmes 2 is out. And not only is it out, it's been out for a year and a half. It came out in October of 2022, and I don't think a single soul on this planet has ever talked about this movie. But it has to have been doing good because there is apparently a third movie in the works right now. Netflix has created this franchise of movies that people completely forget about like 12 seconds after their release. And the amount of money they throw into these projects is ridiculous. And for what? Seriously, if you take a look at those big Netflix original blockbusters where they dumped hundreds of millions of dollars, do you remember any of them? Do you guys remember Bright? Do you remember Project Power? Six Underground? The Gray Man? Red Notice? Have you guys even heard of Outlaw King? This movie cost $120 million to make and the response to it has been an absolute black hole. Same goes for Gal Gadot's Heart of Stone, her $150 million action epic that seems so distant in my brain that I thought it came out in like 2019 or something, but no, this movie came out seven months ago. What the fuck? Does Triple Frontier ring a bell? Raise your hand if you're a fan of The Ridiculous Six, one of the few movies that is currently sitting at an impressive 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. I liked The Atom Project, it was fine, but this movie disappeared as quickly as it came, and even though I liked it, I don't think this is a movie I will ever feel the need to rewatch or even think about again. Do you guys remember the Jennifer Lopez movie, The Mother? that came out last year. This movie was hyped up for months, then it came out, was blasted by critics, and then disappeared from the world's consciousness and nobody noticed it. So I was convinced it flopped, but no? It turns out this movie is the seventh most popular Netflix original film of all time. It was reportedly watched by over 136 million households. Like at this point, it's not a coincidence. It's not just a quirky little surprise that every big Netflix original movie falls into oblivion as soon as they come out. Despite the fact that they're being watched by an insane amount of people, it's happened way too many times for it to be a fluke. At this point, it's the formula behind the Netflix movie machine that just sucks. Why do these movies feel so soulless? Why do they all have the same bland vibe to them? Why are they all so forgettable? Well, the answer is way more simple and frustrating than you'd expect. I've already talked about it in my Instagram stories, which, by the way, follow me on Instagram. We have a lot of fun over there. But I will explain it again here. See, these movies 
are not really movies. What they really are is a marketing tool for the platform. Let me explain. For these movies to exist with the same results in such a large number, Netflix had to come up with a formula to make them. A formula that has only one goal in mind. You'd think it's a convoluted and messy tactic to make these movies, but no, it's actually really dumb. The Netflix movie formula is very simple. Step 1. Craft a script for the most easily consumable movie that can appeal to the largest audience imaginable. It has to be a movie that is simple, that doesn't take any risks and is only going to provide the most generic experience to the audience. The story has to be dumbed down to an insane degree so that it can be even more easily consumable. Basically, if the movie requires more than 3% of your attention, it's too smart, we gotta dumb it down. No topics to address, no intricacies. The dialogue has to be as basic and unimportant as possible. You should be able to watch this movie on mute. The characters have to be equally basic. They have to be stereotypical archetypes with absolutely no depth to them. They're not allowed to be compelling. They have to be as surface level as possible because otherwise you need to pay attention to them and we don't want that. The goal is for the characters to require such little attention from the audience that by the end of the movie, you don't even remember their names and you'll probably only ever refer to them by the names of the actors playing them. If you can remember the name of a character and the movie isn't titled after them, scrap it, the movie is too smart. Also, it has to be an action movie. That way you barely have to create an actual story and you can just throw explosive action sequences everywhere and rely on that to keep people entertained, regardless of how illogical your narrative is. Once you have your script, hire a director nobody knows that can make the movie without a hint of personality in it. It has to look and feel as generic as humanly possible because we want it to appeal to the largest amount of people. No risks, no artistic pursuit. Okay, you have all those elements ready to go? You can now go to step two. Step two, cast all of the biggest stars you can get. And that is, by any means possible, whoever are the most popular actors currently running pop culture, you need to back up an 18-wheeler truck full of money in their driveway. They might be artsy, respected Oscar winners, doesn't matter. There's gonna be a number where they're gonna accept to do the movie even if they don't like the shitty script from step one. So do it. Back up the truck. You need to shower them in money. You shove as many A-list celebrities into your movie as humanly possible. Even if it takes up 75% of your budget, doesn't matter. We'll give you an extra hundred million dollars if needed. And the good news is, because you wrote the most blind and generic characters in the world on purpose, any actor can fit these roles. So just get anyone. It literally does not matter who it is, an actor, a singer, hell, a fucking TikTok star if no one else is available. As long as they're famous, put them in it. Talent does not matter. They're not going to use it anyways. Just put them in it. That's going to be very important for step three. Oh, and bonus point if you can also shove some actors from popular Netflix shows to appeal to those fans as well. Step three, market the fuck out of this movie. This is the most important step because this is basically the reason why this movie exists. It's not for people to actually watch it, it's for people to be hyped enough about the movie that they will decide to subscribe to Netflix and pay 20 bucks a month. That's it. That's the only goal here. These movies are not actually movies. They're an ad for Netflix. They are a marketing tactic first and foremost. You need a big spectacle with famous faces so you can make big trailers. It doesn't matter if the trailer basically shows the entire movie. We don't care if people watch the movie. We don't make money out of that. We need people to want to watch the movie so they subscribe to Netflix because that's how we make money. So big trailers and not only that we're also going to make a yearly even bigger trailer that announces all of the big movies with big stars for the year so that people can get digital FOMO by seeing that a series of big blockbusters are coming out exclusively on Netflix with literally every actor they've ever known. You show them a big action flick with a generic story concept anyone can be into because it feels familiar 
because they've already seen it a million times, and then a bunch of familiar faces that'll convince them it's worth watching. They'll see Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, and Anna de Armas. They'll see Ryan Reynolds, Dwayne Johnson, and Gal Gadot. They'll see Jamie Foxx, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Casey Neistat. They'll see Millie Bobby Brown, Henry Cavill, Angela Bassett, and they're gonna feel excited and feel like they're missing out if they don't have Netflix. They're gonna see the marketing campaigns, the actors' interviews that will probably have viral moments on TikToks that will remind them the movies are coming out on Netflix and the FOMO is gonna come back up. So they don't want to miss out, they subscribe only to watch these movies, they eventually watch them, they forget about them the next day because they suck, but they're still subscribed to Netflix. Mission accomplished. That's basically it. That's their formula. The reason why these Netflix movies are the way they are is because they are basically designed to be made for trailers. The quality of the movies does not matter. That's why they all get panned by critics and audiences alike. That's why nobody ever talks about them when they come out. They are just glorified advertisements for the platform. I mean, look how heavily they marketed Damsel. This thing was at the forefront of all their big marketing campaigns. They even had a novel version version of the movie released last year just so that the readers can know a movie was on the way in just a few months. Millie Bobby Brown is popular, Angela Bassett was just nominated for an Oscar for her role in Black Panther 2, let's capitalize on that. And the thing is, these projects, these name brand Netflix original movies, have become so easy to spot that you can already tell what they're doing just from the movies being announced. You just have to look at the roster of Netflix original movies set to be released for the rest of 2024. Back in Action, an action comedy starring Jamie Foxx and Cameron Diaz, who is coming out of her decade-long retirement from acting just for this movie. I mean, geez, I wonder how much money they backed up in her driveway. The Union, an action comedy starring Halle Berry, Mark Wahlberg and J.K. Simmons. Golly, that's gonna be fun. Atlas, an epic high-budget sci-fi action movie starring Jennifer Lopez. I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. <laughs> with Simu Liu and Sterling K. Brown, directed by the guy who made such memorable classics as San Andreas and Rampage. Boy, I wonder how this one's gonna turn out. Hey, what a fun year we have in store over at Netflix. And now we have Damsel, the latest display of the dreaded Netflix movie curse. We're gonna talk about it, but first, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Mistplay. Mistplay is the ultimate loyalty app for mobile gamers. It is by far the ideal way to discover new games and earn points as you play to unlock some amazing rewards. Gift cards for basically all of your favorite shops and services. Amazon? They got it. PlayStation? They got it. Walmart, Nintendo, or even Spotify. There are so many out there, it's crazy. It's like the perfect hub for mobile gamers, and I should know, I'm always playing mobile games. It's a great way to quiet my brain after a long day of work. And you will find all kinds of games on Misplay. Whether you're into puzzle games or dance games, strategy, battle, there will be a home for you here. Just like there has been for the millions of people who have already joined and redeemed over a hundred million dollars worth of gift cards simply by having fun on their phones. That is wild. So not only can you easily be one of them, you'll also be in really good company. So if you want to try out Mistplay, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. That's mistplay.com slash fsninja and use my code fsninja50 inside the app to get 50 extra points. Thank you so much to Mistplay for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to the show. So Damsel is the story of... Wait, hold on, I don't remember. What is it about? 
I literally just saw this movie. Okay, so Damsel is the story of Elodie, the daughter of a lord who lives a quiet life in her little village where people are poor, hungry, and cold. One day, as she goes home after chopping some wood with her sister, Elodie's father, whose name nobody remembers, announces to Elodie that she has received a proposal from the queen to marry her son. Naturally, the entire family is ecstatic because Elodie is about to become a princess. Meaning they're all gonna be fucking rich and the lord will be able to take better care of the village's people. However, Elodie is not too happy about this. She's not interested in marriage, let alone marriage to someone she doesn't know or doesn't love. And she doesn't share her family's excitement about the potential fortune to come out of this union. But because she sees the path for the people of her village and because she is loyal to her duty as the daughter of the lord, Elodie swallows her pride and reluctantly agrees to marry the prince and so the family quickly makes way to the kingdom to meet the royal family and make the ceremony happen. As they arrive, everything about this scenario is surprisingly dreamlike. Elodie meets the prince, who is much nicer than she expected, the queen is welcoming, the kingdom is gorgeous, it's all perfect. Almost too good to be true, which starts to make Elodie's stepmother a little suspicious of the royal family. She can't quite say why, but something feels off. She tells Elodie there is still time to back out of the wedding, but due to their rocky relationship, Elodie doesn't really listen to her. And the next day, the wedding happens. It's a beautiful and opulent ceremony that charms everyone, but just as the joy of the day overtakes the kingdom, things take a very sudden turn. After the ceremony, Elodie is taken by the royal family to a cave where she is told she's going to complete a special ritual the family has been doing for centuries. And that is where the horrifying truth is revealed. Elodie is not really a bride. She's a sacrifice. A sacrifice to complete an ancient ritual she was never meant to be a part of. And before she knows it, Elodie is thrown in a deeper level of the cave, where she finds herself being stalked and threatened by a very angry dragon. Guys, this movie is so stupid. And here's the thing, it's not even that bad of a movie. I've seen way worse, like, a month ago. I can see better than I ever have. That is okay. Just be who you are. The concept of the movie is not awful. A young woman is about to marry a prince and is tricked by the royal family into becoming a sacrifice for an ancient ritual. That's cool. It's the execution that is just so annoying to me. Damsel truly is the perfect representation of this very specific breed of movies that Netflix has created for its platform. Movies that almost by design are mediocre as hell. Movies that are designed to generate hype through certain metrics, but that have nothing to offer in practice. It's like movies made for data rather than audiences. And Damsel is the newest entry in a very long long series of movies that audiences seem to finally have caught up on. The best way to describe it would be this one line from a review of Damsel by Melanie Fisher, who very effectively summarizes her thoughts by saying this. With Damsel, they've hit the bullseye of this low-hanging target. A movie fine enough that most people you know will likely at least half watch it, and bland enough that most of us will have forgotten about it entirely in a month's time. And that, right there, I I think is the most accurate representation of what these big Netflix movies have been. Whether it be Damsel or any other in that category I named earlier, Netflix original movies are the ultimate form of laziness in filmmaking. They're boring, their scripts feel like first drafts that were written by AI, they're super impersonal, they have nothing to offer beyond their botched basic concepts, and on the surface, it seems like the only real plan behind them is to capitalize on the presence of a-list actors to generate hype, and Damsel is no exception. And the worst part is, despite being an extremely forgettable and mediocre movie, Damsel is one of Netflix's strongest entries to date which should really tell you what standard the platform has set for itself. The story is full of plot holes, a lot of it doesn't make sense, and despite the fact that the movie is packed with really good actors, with the likes of Millie Bobby Brown, Robin Wright, and fucking 
Angela Bassett. Despite those names, the acting in the movie is really bad. Everyone is phoning it in here. Nobody cares. Nobody is trying. Every actor in this movie is just here to collect a paycheck. And like, I can't blame them. When you see the script they were working with here, it's not surprising that this movie gives the overwhelming impression that not a single person involved in making it was passionate about it in the slightest. Okay, let's take a look at it. The movie begins with a flashback taking place centuries before the events of the main story, where you see the old king and his knights going after the dragon. It's a very lazy setup for an even lazier twist that comes later, but yeah, they follow the dragon into its cave, the dragon catches them, and they get bodied. Then fast forward to centuries later, and we meet our protagonist, Elodie, who the movie immediately lets you know is not like other girls, because she chops wood and she doesn't want marriage. And also, even though this is taking place in medieval times, she somehow wears lip gloss. Yeah, that's the thing with this movie that I kept noticing the whole time I was watching it. The makeup in this movie is so distracting because it looks way too modern and like normal. They wear lip gloss and mascara and eyeshadow and it kills the immersion so much. It makes it feel like you're watching a shitty stage play. Anyways, Elodie is married off to the prince guy, so they go to the kingdom to meet him and his family before the ceremony. It's boring. The first 30-35 minutes of that movie are some of the most boring shit I've watched in a really long time. You can feel the writer of the movie being completely disinterested in his own story. That entire first act is just going through the motions as absent-mindedly as possible. The dialogue is as basic as it gets. It only serves as direct exposition for all the basic information you need Need to know for the plot to unfold. There's no character building, there's no character arc being set up, no depth, no emotion. Literally, the first act feels like a list of bullet points the movie needs to hit to move on with its concept, and it's not interested in doing anything beyond that. This union will save us. I've made my peace with it. My happiness is a small price to pay for the future of my people. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. So blah bidi bee blah bidi boo blah, Elodie gets married and right after that she's taken to the cave and she's yeeted <laughs> off the bridge and she falls for a very, very long time. What? If the movie can be that lazy, I get to be lazy too, I'm sorry. So Elodie crashes to the ground yeah. and she's dead, end of the movie. Oh no, actually she survived that fall. Not even a broken bone or anything. She's fine. So I guess the movie continues. And that's the first element of the movie that will come back a whole lot as it goes. Elodie's plot armor is so ridiculous that it becomes almost funny after a while because it's kind of insulting to the audience's intelligence, but it's also so incredibly bold in its stupidity that you just kind of have to laugh. There are so many moments where Elodie should have fucking died, but she just just doesn't because the movie made her cartoonishly invincible. While I was watching, I kept telling myself there are points where Elodie's sheer inability to die kind of reaches fast and furious levels, which ended up making a lot of sense because it turns out Damsel was written by the guy who wrote Fast 10. Yep, he's the guy who wrote this shit. No surprises there! So Elodie starts wandering the cave, coming to terms with the fact that she was just bamboozled by the royal family, but she quickly has to snap out of it because she realizes she's not alone in here. And that is when she has her very first encounter with the dragon. That, I will admit, is a really cool aspect of the movie. I like that the dragon isn't just a feral beast acting on instinct. This dragon is intelligent. It can speak and it fucks with you. It doesn't want to kill Elodie outright. It wants her to run. It wants her to be scared. 
It's like a game to the dragon. It wants to make it a chase. The dragon stalks Elodie in the shadows, talks to her, makes her feel scared on purpose. It purposefully gives her the impression that she's hiding or finding a way out when she's only really falling into its numerous traps. The reason why that's cool in concept is because escaping the cave is becoming the ultimate stealth mission. It's not just about finding a way out, it's about finding a way out without being noticed by the dragon who is smart and actively messing with you and tricking you. Again, a solid idea on paper. There's a lot to do with this, but the execution is made incredibly annoying because... How do I say that nicely? Ah, oh, fuck it, I said it earlier anyways. Elodie is fucking stupid. She's really dumb, in a way that's a little frustrating at times. Like, globally speaking, the plot just severely lacks logic and makes you a little too aware of how little thought went into the movie you're watching. They did not care one bit, and you can tell. And that lack of logic makes the character of Elodie really dumb. Like, she knows that the dragon is stalking her and toying with her. She knows the dragon is watching her. She knows she has to be in stealth mode to not make a single noise because this thing can hear everything. She is fully aware of that, but for some reason, throughout this entire movie, Elodie will not stop making noise. Like, all the time. She will not shut up. And I'm not even talking about like little grunts and stuff like that. Uh-uh. Nope. She screams all the time. She talks to herself out loud constantly. It's like she's trying to make as much noise as she can at every turn. So every time she gets caught by the dragon, you're like, yeah. Obviously, you idiot, you won't shut your mouth. Anyways, the movie then proceeds to be a boring and repetitive drag of Elodie finding a hiding place, trying to find a way out of the cave, being attacked by the dragon, barely making it out, finding a new hiding place, trying to find a way out of the cave, being attacked by the dragon, barely making it out, etc, etc. It goes on and on, and it feels way longer than it actually is because the pacing is all over the place. For reference, by the time time Elodie first crashes into the cave 35 minutes in, there's only about an hour left to the movie. But it somehow feels so much longer than that. And not only is it mostly boring, it's also full of plot points that make absolutely no sense and that the movie will never bother to explain. There's a scene in the movie where Elodie has a dream slash vision of the spirits of every woman that was thrown into the dragon's cave before. Her, and one of them speaks to her, shows her a map she drew on the wall, and tells her a weird line like, it was all a lie. And then Elodie wakes up, and that's it. This is never explained. This is never mentioned again. You're just supposed to accept that Elodie spoke to the spirit of a past princess that guided her. And yeah, the spirit shows her a map of the cave she drew on the wall. And can I just say... That's a plot hole. The map of the cave makes absolutely no sense because drawing it would have required the person who did to come back to this hiding spot in the cave to draw it, which is not possible because the only person who possibly could have done it was that one girl from the dream. But then when Elodie gets to her final spot, which she believed to be the exit, it turns out to be a dead end and that is where she finds her body. So how did she come back to finish this map? if she was blasted by the dragon when she found the exit. A map. <sighs> now, where am I? Stop talking out loud! Oh my god! So Elodie tries to escape that way, but the exit was a dead end. The dragon jump scares her and she's about to get torched, but obviously the dragon is distracted by something at the very last second and leaves because Elodie's plot armor is comically ridiculous. So Elodie goes back to the center of the cave where she finds out the truth about her presence here. It turns out that the kingdom Elodie thought she was becoming the princess of was 
was built long ago on the land of this ancient dragon. More specifically, the last living dragon. A mother whose babies and last descendants were murdered by the old king centuries ago. The dragon retaliated by killing all of the king's guard, but when she saw the king begging for his life as she was about to kill him too, she decided that death was too easy for him, and she agreed to let him and the rest of the kingdom live on two conditions. That he gives her his daughters as a sacrifice, and that every future generation of the royal family also sacrifices three daughters to her for the rest of time. And if a generation fails to make right on that pact, she will fly out of her cave and burn the entire kingdom to the ground. So, the royal family, for hundreds of years following this incident, developed a system to trick the dragon. Each generation, they would find three poor women to marry off to one of the princes. They would then have the newlyweds merge their blood in the ceremony so that the dragon could smell royal blood on the new brides, and then sacrifice them to the dragon, keeping their own daughters alive. Long story short, they've been tricking the dragon into murdering innocent girls every generation and the dragon never realized she was being bamboozled. But like, the twist is not presented in an interesting way. Elodie just kind of stumbles upon it by accident and just pieces things together out of nowhere. And at no point does it relate to anything that concerns her. This has nothing to do with her, so it's just not that interesting to find it out that way. If the reveal had come from the dragon and Elodie could have had that big moment where she realizes why she's been tricked, because yes, up until this point, Elodie still has no idea why this is all happening to her, from her perspective, this is completely random, then yeah, that would have been way more entertaining. She could have pieced together at that moment that the dragon was being tricked, but no. Remember, the script is not allowed to be smart. It's rule number one of the Netflix formula. So dumb twist. And then third act. Ooh, I'm gonna do the heart eyes because of love. <laughs> the third act of Damsel is downright insane. It feels like a completely different movie than the one I was watching 30 minutes prior. It's crazy how bad it gets out of nowhere. The second act was mostly boring, but like, it was fine. But then it just kind of throws itself off a cliff and it just crashes. So basically, thanks to her insane plot armor, Elodie is able to escape the dragon and she becomes the first fake princess in centuries to actually exit the cave. So the dragon loses her fucking shit, exits the cave, and destroys everything around her. The queen sees this happening from her castle and understands that Elodie probably escaped, so she panics and goes to find Elodie's family. She stabs Elodie's stepmother and kidnaps her little sister to force her into going through the same ritual and offer her as replacement to the dragon. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Elodie's dad is dead. It turns out he knew he was sending his daughter to die, but accepted to go through with it because the queen offered him so much money that he could have taken care of his entire village, but then he realized he couldn't live with what he did, so he went to the cave to try and rescue Elodie, and he got bodied by the dragon. Nobody mourns him, he's forgotten as soon as he dies, it literally doesn't matter. So Elodie's little sister, whose name I don't remember, is thrown into the pit, and she's immediately captured by the dragon, who somehow knows that this is Elodie's little sister? I don't think it's ever explained how she knows. I don't think the writer knows how she knows. Knows, but okay, whatever. And the dragon decides not to kill Elodie's sister, but instead to hold her captive. Because her ego is hurt that Elodie escaped her, I guess. So she doesn't want a random sacrifice, she wants Elodie. So her plan is to wait for Elodie to find out her sister was thrown into the cave because she for some reason, thinks Elodie will come back to get her sister. And let me just say, Dragon, that is an insane assumption to make. I don't know why the dragon was so sure Elodie would come back. For all she knows, Elodie got out, hopped on the first boat she saw, and got the fuck out of that kingdom. She literally has no reason to believe she'd come back. Anyways, Elodie comes back. She returns to the cave and she cuts her hair to symbolize that she is now a badass warrior princess like fucking Xena after spending, what, one night in the cave? And suddenly she's fucking Wonder Woman. She knows how to fight with a sword and shit. I'll be crying if I look like that too, bro. That's fucked up what they be doing to y'all. She goes to rescue her little sister and then ensues what I can only describe as the stupidest final battle I've ever seen. And that's coming from someone who watched Fan 4 
four stick. This is where the plot armor gets so incredibly ridiculous that it literally feels like the writer is flipping you off as it plays out. The amount of moments where the dragon could end this and Kamehameha the fuck out of Elodie and her sister is just astronomical. But somehow, the dragon never goes for the kill when she has the chance to. She always waits for Elodie to be charging her with a sword to attempt something. Girl, just kill her! That's what you've been trying to do this whole time! There, there you go. She's open. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. You said yourself the sword wouldn't kill you, so kill her. She's too close to go anywhere. Torch her alive. Torch her. Go ahead. Kill her. All right. Finally. She's dead. Oh, no. She survives that? Okay. Sure. Oh, she survives that too? She was just slammed to the ground by a fucking 50 feet tall dragon that's maybe 500 times her weight. And she's just, she's okay? Boy, that plot armor is really thick. Okay, but now you got her. You got her. Kill her. Now, she literally cannot go anywhere. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. Oh my fucking god. Kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her, she's hurt, she can't run. Kill her, kill her, kill her, kill her. You don't have to get close, you're a fucking dragon. Torch her alive. Kill her. Oh my fucking god. This movie is so stupid. It's blowing my mind. By the way, this scene of the dragon slowly getting close to Elodie without killing her goes on for three entire minutes with almost no dialogue. Then she tries to torch her fucking finally, but the flame bounces back on her own face and she's dying now. Did I mention this movie was written by the guy who wrote Fast 10? Anyways, Elodie tries to tell the dragon that she's been tricked for centuries, that she's not really of royal blood, it was all a trick, but the dragon doesn't really believe her. And I just gotta say, the twist is so dumb because the movie tries to paint the dragon as a victim here, and Elodie is like relating to her as victims of the kingdom's lies, but it's like, are we taking away the centuries of innocent girls being killed by the dragon to get revenge on a dude that died hundreds of years ago? Like, the movie is literally like, oh, poor dragon. She was tricked into killing the wrong innocent women. Poor dragon. This is really unfair. Yet another example of women being lied to unfairly. Bro, she's been murdering innocent girls for literal centuries. Even if they were of royal blood, it would still be murdering innocent girls. They have nothing to do with what happened to her. Like, this isn't the girl power moment the movie sees to think it is, so the fact that the movie ends with Elodie and the dragon becoming besties and teaming up to destroy the royal family in their castle makes absolutely no fucking sense. Because yes, uh, that's how the movie ends, by the way. Eventually, the dragon just believes Elodie, so Elodie saves the dragon's life, and together they go back to the castle to exact revenge on the royal family. How the fuck did Elodie just walk into the castle? Are there no guards there? Anyone can just walk in? This is a castle with the king and the queen in it. Nope, nope, nope. You're thinking too much. The script can be smart. Don't forget. So Elodie shows up at the castle and claps back at the queen with some of the lamest dialogue I've ever heard. You think we ought to fear you now? Why? It's not me you should fear. This is the end of your story. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then the dragon shows up, torches the entire castle, Elodie somehow teleports outside of the castle when that happens, then the director really wants to let you know he watched Game of Thrones, and then that's it. The movie ends. Elodie, her sister, and her stepmother, who got stabbed and was fully bleeding out, but I guess just walked it off, they leave the kingdom together with the dragon, who is now a member of the family. 
I wish I'd made that up, but that's the real ending. You can look it up. Damsel is a really stupid movie, but like not fun stupid boring stupid. It's bland and predictable. You watch the first 10 minutes and you can just guess bit by bit what is going to happen in this thing. There is nothing to get attached to here. The story is empty. The characters are empty. There is no charisma to any of them. They have no arcs. It's like the whole thing was purposefully designed to be instantly forgotten. It is the apex incarnation of the Netflix movie formula. A movie about nothing made for no one. A movie so devoid of anything to offer with a script my five-year-old cousin could have written between two episodes of Dora the Explorer and for only selling point the presence of beloved actors on a poster that don't even seem interested in bringing anything to the table for such a dull project. Angela Bassett and Robin Wright, who are both world-class actresses, are sleepwalking through these roles. Millie Bobby Brown gives by far the most bland performance of her career, and that's including Godzilla King of the monsters. She's never been so checked out in a role. The visuals are unremarkable. There are some very bad green screen sequences. The music seems like it's not trying. Damsel is just bare minimum the movie. My one positive point of the entire flick is the voice actress who voiced the dragon. I thought she was pretty fucking phenomenal. She did a great job. And that's it. It's been a while that I've been thinking about making a video on the topic of Netflix original movies being this like broken marketing tactic that only hurts Netflix's reputation in the long run. But I kept telling myself that the movies were so forgettable that nobody would care if I made that video. But Damsel was just the last straw for me. I had to talk about it. This embarrassing series of Netflix's soulless blockbusters is one of the biggest frustrations I've had in recent years. And given the response to this movie and the general consensus of people expecting Netflix movies to be bad by default. I know I'm not the only one, and they've noticed, by the way. If you don't know, apparently Netflix has announced a couple months ago that they realized their formula has been faltering, and they're reportedly very unhappy with the overwhelmingly negative response to every single one of their quote-unquote high-profile movies. And they claim that from now on, their focus is going to be on quality over quantity. They're aiming at making less movies yearly, but making sure every movie that comes out is an absolute banger that is worth watching. And funny enough, that announcement was surprisingly made a couple weeks after the release of Heart of Stone with Gal Gadot. I wonder where it came from. I almost made this video after seeing that movie because, whoo, let me tell you, Damsel is fucking Shakespeare next to that fucking thing. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future with their movies. But this video is my own personal way to sever my ties with it. I have absolutely no fucking interest in watching another Netflix original movie unless I hear from trusted sources that it fucking slaps. I am so done with them. Also, there's a Red Notice 2 in the works apparently, so they're probably lying about wanting to make better movies. Anyways, bye!